You are listening to Black Revolutionary Media. Here are the latest, greatest, and most melanated revolutionary works produced for your listening experience. This episode is The Water Flower by Tristan Andre Parks. Performed by Mieko Gavia. Author Notes This is a work that is minimalistic at the root. This is a Southern Afrofuturist surrealist folklore, thus it requires the work of the actor to embody the nature and essence of Ezra and Ezra's environment. How he sees and bears witness to his odyssey from the moment he arrives at St. Simon's to the moment he steps into the essence of his true self. Cassandra is a woman from and of Louisiana. She is always in conversation with the deep Southern Negro. When she speaks, It's rooted, deeply creole, and always from a place of love. When conjuring this work, it is the work of the creative community to lead us forward. This work is rooted in magic and the deep south, and again, minimal. I believe in the power of technology and using it as a sole source to create the images that ignite the imagination of those who bear witness, especially to the water. With love and care, The water flower is yours, beloved. And if you find anything like sin lurking in and around our hearts, I ask you, my Father and my wonder-working God, to pluck it out and cast it into the sea of forgetfulness, where it will never rise again to harm us in this world, nor condemn us in the judgment. Zora Neale Hurston, Mules and Men. Genesis. Line the creek, child. Close your eyes and there you'll learn to let go of what ain't yours. There's a burning bush deafening my ears. I've landed near a dock where there's a muddled chuckles. Eyes tortured from the rays of a burnt sun. I catch my breath. I look around me and before me is a well. A woman is wearing a certain kind of history. She is ancient and beautiful. Her hair gray and thick like a fortress. She dances with this well with authority. Breeze. I summon the bravery to stand and walk nearer to her. She turns. Her stunning face meets mine. I am reaching closer to the well, and she pierces me with that baritone. Thirsty? Her beauty penetrates me differently. Her skin etched with stories. Dark. Some told, others untold. Her eyes appear to have a kinship with the moon dragging the tide. She faces me once more. You're going to just sit there? You're going to drink from this here pail? She entertains laughter, walks over and grabs my right hand fiercely as I lie on the brink of the shore. Drink. Still, I'm charged with numerous questions, but most important dehydration, so a simple thank you is the only response that's satisfying. Come with me, you's hungry. How I got here leaves me. Last I remember standing at the railing of a ship and shooting forward, thundering and lightning. The tide choking me until I could no longer fight the current. The sea swallowed me. With a silent prayer, I swam to whatever shore I could. Bracelets of water hugging me until, until. What brought me to this here island that seems to be occupied only by this peculiar and assertive woman? This all disturbed my mind, and yet she somehow embraced me with a heart as mundane as home. Come with me. You's hungry. She walks away as if she knows I'm going to follow her up the mountain of a hill away from that cold shore, and she damn right breathes. I follow her up the steep hills and into a house that is tiny, yet I believe this house has witnessed the comings and goings of many. The room filled with sweet aroma of oils and jasmine. I walk steady behind her into the home. 
She walks over to the chimney where there is soup warming. She hands me a bowl and shit, I don't waste no time. Immediately I devour the broth and rice. Rosemary and jasmine rice, beef stock. She's staring over my shoulder. It's good. Who are you? I feel confident enough to ask. Finally, Cassandra, Cassandra Toussaint. Sweet honey of the rock. She comes and lies gingerbread and buttermilk on the table next to me. And use Ezra, Ezra songs. Numb. You look like a deer cotton headlights boy, she laughs. You come to do some work. Work? Yes, you've been sent by the waters to do your first works. The waters? And where exactly am I? She's strangely amused. Beloved, this here is St. Simon's Island. I understand that you believed you were headed for another assignment, one that you were trying to escape. I think it's best if I go. Is there a station near? Her midnight hands caress mine, drawing them up to my face. Breath leaves my body. I'm a seer. You see, my folk is spread all throughout Louisiana. I came up in Lafayette right before my folk traveled southeast and ended up right here in Georgia. Louisiana got laws against folk who practice black magic. My mother was a priestess. She was a seer. Could see far greater than I ever could. She often spoke with the dead. Folk from all over the Mississippi Valley would come speak with her. White folk, too, to connect with their loved ones. Some by will and others by happen chance. She was a healer, and I've been blessed with that same gift. I speaks with the dead. And you, beloved, possess this very gift, the gift of seeing. Seeing, lady, I... Your mama's name was Ruth. She worked as a washing woman for some white folk down in Charleston, and you grew to be her only child. How? My thought whispers, but somehow she hears them. Yes, you and I kinfolk, and I ain't talking blood either. I'm talking spirit. I understand you were headed overseas, yes? To France? But the water had other plans for you. Miss Cassandra, I sure enough hate to be rude, but I got to go. Just give me directions to the nearest station. Her rough and dark hands caress my cold and bitter ones once more. Yet this time, my body and mind transport me to a witness and of a ghost. Right before my eyes stand the shadow of my baby brother outside our Charleston home. The birds hum. Joe? Ezra, where you been? Body still. I don't know whether to cry, run, or hug his face. Maybe all three. Joseph, what? Mama misses you, Ezra. Numb, numb, numb. Why can't I move? Everything feels as if it's happening at once. He's laughing. <laughs> Mama said of both of my children, I swear Ezra's me all over again. Joe, I'm sorry. I was not there for you like I should have been. Hey, you want to walk with me to the corner store? Mama told me to pick her up some milk and bread and gave me an extra quarter to buy some candy. Numbness and mourning befriended me. How the two exist at the same time inside me, I do wonder. But their tears are in waves. My heart dances its own polyrhythms. Why are you standing there crying, Ezra? Is you coming or not? I... Joseph's shadow is grabbing my hand with conviction. And instantly, my mind and body both teleport back to where I am greeted by Cassandra. I abruptly remove myself from the table where the warm soup has turned sour. That seductive aroma of jasmine rice and rosemary seasoning now bitter. I pace back and forth, face wet. But this time, it's real. The hell is happening? That's been wrestling with you a while, boy. That's why you've come here. You were on your way out, but the water called you here, the St. Simons. What the hell are you talking about, water? 
lady, again, I don't mean to be rude, but I ain't got time for none of this hoodoo foolishness. That hoodoo foolishness is where you come from, boy. Your folk from Carolina, they all get you. You thought you could run from that. Ain't no such thing as run when it come to the heart. You carry it home with you. I... What did you mean earlier when you said I was a seer? You possess in your mind and heart the gift to witness all that is to come and all that has gone. But it ain't ever really gone. It's right here with you. She places her right index finger over my heart. What was that dream I just had? Of my baby brother? Yes. You've been holding that guilt of your brother running off and you not being there to save him. I wanted to. I wanted to. I wanted to. I. Son, hold my hands. She demands in a kind and genteel voice. Still, I'm busy with my own tears and amusement. I hesitate. We catch one another's eye. I finally place my hands in hers. Close your eyes. I need you to breathe and to also remember. Remember, when you speak to the ghost, speak gently and do not abuse the children of the dead. Inhales, much like the first time my body travels to an empty dirt road. The road that holds an ancient story where laughter and hardness hold me in the deep. There, I witness a bush bright and burning with laughter. <laughs> Perhaps it is the laughter of my baby brother. The two of us always escaped from the nearby creek where Shoe Round acted as a holy grail. Perhaps the laughter of my father's inspiration after making kindly with his malt. There's a weighty distance between me and the laughing with fire bush. The bush breathes. Where have you been, Ezra? My body is somewhere between solid ground and defiant gravity. As the rupture of the fire undulates, I walk with an effectiveness toward it. You come all this way and don't even recognize me? Mama. Ezra, you know you can let go. Let go of the fear. You've always been one to do more work than required, child. Mama, I don't know what's happening or how I got here. You've been running for a long time, Ezra. Ever since Joseph went missing. That's the kind of hurt that no mama should ever experience, nor a brother either. Mama, use a bush. Ezra, I need you to do one thing for me. I need you to go to that creek where you and your brother would play, and I need you to lie in it. I need you to lie in it and remember. What are you talking about? Lie in the creek, child, and close your eyes, and there you'll learn to let go of what ain't yours. What ain't mine? Mama. The undulating bush begins to contract. I need you to stop running, Ezra, and let go. You got a gift in you. Something nobody else got, but you got to face the truth. The truth of what? The bush is fading. Wait, 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 wait. I feel myself tunneling back in time from the middle of the dirt road where that burning bush lies and back into the hands of Cassandra. I catch my breath, still overcome with questions. And yes, more tears. It was a burning bush, and my mama's voice. All Cassandra does, silently laugh. I'm not sure if it's a mocking laughter or one that is serious. Either or, I'm irritated. Who are you, lady? Seriously. Listen, folk wound up here when they find themselves in need. In need? I was leaving home, and all I can remember is that a storm hit, and I find myself here. You find yourself here? Lady, what are you trying to say? I'm sick of this here riddle shit. Son, you don't find yourself anywhere. You are where you are because that's where you're supposed to be. Now sweat befriends me. I pierce Cassandra's eyes. Eyes sweet with wetness. But this gift of seeing you say I got, is this what that is? All this traveling back in time and seeing the burning bush and all that? Yes, son. She states this quietly and with a firm assurance. Mama, 
She mentioned something about returning to the creek where my brother and I would play. She said there I'd find out the truth. Now her amusement is subtle and calm. Do you know how to help me? Son, I've been helping you this whole time. All you gotta do is channel your own stillness and listen. Get out of your way. That's what's going on deep inside. What does that even mean? It means you got to close your eyes and breathe. Imagine that creek where you and your brother used to play and breathe. After moments of piecing her eyes, I close mine. My face is still wet and queer. I imagine. Here I am, met face to face at the quiet creek where I am bearing witness to the easy water. The water, <laughs> the water laughs at me. <laughs> it's asking me to laugh back. But here I am with that wet, strange look on my face. Unlike that bright and burning bush, the water does not whisper. Rather, it prescribes me to come live. I walks closer and closer and closer until finally I am moved to remove my shoes followed by rolling up my pants. My movement is less hesitant than before and more efficient. Realizing that I now have an assignment to fulfill, I am releasing that wet queerness and pursue something more determined. I lie down in the creek, breath weighted. The wind is humming as well in the bald cypress that encircles me. I inhale as I lie down in that creek where me and Joseph played shoe round or draw a bucket of water and vowed through a series of pinky promises that one would not do life without the other. Here I am, lying next to the water lilies welcoming me, wet and open, eyes shut, breath is met with a certain rhythm. That rhythm that is familiar to my daddy's hip thrust whenever Louis Armstrong serenaded that hard and still South Carolinian home. Or that rhythm when, after a few swallows of gin, his hands that made love to my mother also struck her. That rhythm. Now, eyes open and vulnerable. The sea? Teleported in the middle of the ocean. I am walking on water and from behind me, I am met with a soft voice. It rings true. And there I am met with the face of a gorgeous and broken man. Daddy, who do you think? He says with that beautifully cunning smile. I think loudly to myself, this is it. This is why. Boy, you look and act just like your mama. Joe more like me. I'm overcome by the softness of my daddy's voice and the softness of his face, and yet he damaged us and himself. Daddy, why'd you do it? Why'd you hurt Mama? Why'd you keep on? Son, I, liquor in me, and I don't know how to control myself. I guess feeling like a disappointment to her and you boys, not being able to provide in the ways I wanted to, I took to hurt. Daddy, you were the love of me and Joe's lives. We was only kids. We wanted our daddy. Daddy grabs my face. I feel the blood flow of my father's hand. Daddy takes my face and places it on his heart. We hold one another. There in the middle of that cavernous ocean, my heart strangely settled, and we dance. Dance in rhythm with the subtle drum of that fathomless sea. Ezra, I needed you more than you needed me. I don't have many regrets in my life, but my one regret is how I treated your mama and left you boys. As he speaks, I feel myself falling into his chest more freely. I feel some lump that's been in my chest throughout the entire time is softening as we hold one another. You know, it really ain't your fault that your brother went missing. You can't let what happened to your brother weigh on you, son. It's natural to feel like you're supposed to be there with them, watching over him. But what them white folk done to that boy ain't yours to bear. They don't know what it feels to be human because they busy being white. You avenge Joseph by living. Dancing with my father in the middle of the ocean. 
I spent so much of my life hard and bitter and unknowingly so that I never took the time to ask my dad why. Everything Cassandra was saying is ringing true. You are where you are because that's where you're supposed to be. Here I am with the ghost of my daddy, dancing. 27 years of my life is answered right here in the arms of my father. The waves of the ocean begin to increase and so does our dancing. As the water undulates, so does my body. Daddy's ghost is becoming solely a memory. Do not abuse the children of the dead. And within a breath, I was back in that very creek where Joseph and I made joy our home. Lion, I feel, not myself. Like I've been suddenly awakened. Burdens down. Perhaps this freedom comes from the very dance I danced with my daddy right there on the ocean where the dead are alive. There are echoes of the dead that ring in my head. The dead present out on that water with my daddy's hands baptizing me. Bloody bones rising, shaking themselves loose with each sway my daddy and I made. The water has its way of waking the dead. It also has its way of lying the dead to rest. Breathe. Back in the hands of Cassandra. There she is smiling with that knowing smile. How was it out there? Miss Cassandra, I feel different. I feel sort of soft. That vision or dream that I had dancing with my daddy sort of let me know that he's okay. That I'll be okay. And whatever worries I might have can be laid to rest because I carry my folk with me. No matter how much I try to run, they always gonna be there. See, the water and dancing show got a way of reminding folk that they gonna be okay. The water makes you soft. It open you. But I want you to know that you possessed a mighty gift that's been passed down from your folk. You can use that gift at your own will and you can use that gift to help other folk like you. You just gotta stay soft. Softness ain't weakness. Softness means you're connected. You open for anything that comes your way. Softness is power. She's handed me a map to catch the nearest train. I know you've been asking to get where you're going. Miss Cassandra, to be honest with you, I think it's best if I go back home to Charleston to be with my folk to heal and shepherd folk like you do here in Georgia. Her stunning face breathes. Son, you just stay the night here and we'll see you to the nearest train station first thing in the morning. Meanwhile, eat this here gingerbread. I take a bite of the gingerbread. I all of a sudden remember the meals Mama prepared and I'm assured that going back home is indeed the answer. She prepares a pallet not too far from the kitchen for me to prepare for a night's worth of rest. I finish the gingerbread and go lie my head on the pallet. I know that in the morning I return home. In the morning, there is no more running. I am home within myself. In the morning, softness greets me. In the morning, the water lilies will expand. In the morning, revelation. Thank you for listening to Black Revolutionary Media. You can check us out online and hear more of our work at blackrevolutionarymedia.com and support our work at patreon.com slash blackrevolutionarymedia.